hearts race. And the crowd goes wild. All across the nation, the Dirt Track Warriors duke it out for what matters the most. The trophy and the glory. This is Gas and Glory, presented by r r Enterprises. Coming to you direct from the studios here at r r Enterprises, this is Gas and Glory with Kyle Luters and Neil Quick. And Neil, what's up, my friend? Uh, just hanging out, Kyle. Uh, just uh, taking in the day and uh, getting some things done for Short Track Nationals at last minute, uh, which starts Wait tomorrow. a minute. Wait a minute. Last minute? Yeah, last minute. That We don't do those types of things around here. I am the professional last minute. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just uh, wrapping up some things and uh, actually working on uh, stuff going in for uh, Chili Bowl and, and the holiday time. Well, now you're starting to scare me. You're starting to get ahead of yourself. I'm getting yeah. a little worried. I worry myself, too, when I'm working that far in advance. No kidding. <laughs> anyway, this is the racing business, folks. And speaking of racing, it was a phenomenal weekend for Team R&R. Donnie Schatz, we mention it each and every time, folks. Here we go once again. He comes from winning the last chance showdown to win the A main at Fremont. He beat Shane Stewart and local standout Chris Andrews. After Chris Andrews started uh, on the pole, he finished third. I'm sorry, I screwed up my notes there just a little bit. Shots missed the transfer in the heat race while battling with Paul McMahon, won the B, and then started 11th in the feature. It's his 26th win of the season. Neil, unbelievable. Yeah, very impressive. Uh, continuing to put up the wins, and, and in this one, uh, it wasn't an easy one for him. Absolutely not, but as I... Uh, Talk to some of the drivers. If there's a place that you're going to be able to pass and make up some ground, Fremont's one of them. It's a great racy little track, man. It's uh, got several grooves to pass and uh, worked a shots of advantage on this one. No kidding, no kidding. He now goes back-to-back -back and wins there, has win number 26 on the season. And you know, if we wouldn't have gotten rained out at the Grove and let's say he could have won it, oh yeah, we could be getting close to 30 here. I'm just saying. That magical 30 you've been talking about. If we could have gotten to 30, that taco that we bet earlier would have been so, so good. <laughs> uh, moving right along, in the ASCS, Tony Bruce Jr. took the opening night of the Devil's Bowl Winter Nationals. It was a scary night, though, Neil, as defending series champion Jason Johnson had a drive line come apart and banged him up a little bit in the ankles, but luckily he was okay. On the second night, it was Matt Covington taking the checkers and uh, Winter Nationals down at Devil's Bowl. Really cool race. Uh, the purse is pretty good for an ASCS show, and uh, it seems like all the competitors always love going down to that track. It's one of my favorites. Yeah, neat neat facility and uh, one of those uh, tracks that have been around for a long time, and uh, they've made a lot of improvements over the years over there. And uh, Glad to see Matt Covington get a win on the, the final night there uh, in the TNL Foundry car. Uh, those are... Good guys are in our customers, and uh, glad to see him put it in uh, Victory Circle. We're going to need to come up with like some kind of hand sign for Team R and R for them to do in Victory Lane. The only problem is, is you can't really make an R. Oh yeah, I see what you're doing there. That's interesting, Kyle. Yeah, I feel a little. Uh, I feel like charades going on here in the uh, studio. That or Pictionary, one of the two. We move on. Nice. <laughs> Trophy Cup is one of the most exciting events of the year. We don't need no stinking four tens. We went 360 racing. And Willie Croft won the final night feature and the overall title at the event held at Thunderbolt Raceway out in Tulare, California. He was driving the famous Rudine number 26. It was cool to see that sprint car back in victory lane. $150,000 total purse money with 13 grand, 13 smackers, 13,000 smackers, that is, going to the winner. So, cool event once again. Great event and uh, especially a good payout for a 360 race out there. I'm telling you, you know what the coolest thing is? I can never keep track of what the points format is for that show, but they're accruing points every time they hit the track. Oh, that is cool, man. I think they even get points for wheel packing. It was uh, interesting <laughs> to see uh, Willie Croft, actually, uh, and he probably did get some points there for wheel packing, but yep. nice to see him get a, a win in that Rudine car. That Rudine car, I mean, you think about the history in that. Uh, Sam Haferteep's driven it a couple of times. Who could forget Shane Stewart driving it for uh, many, many races? But, yeah, that car always stout up in the Pacific Northwest and Northern California. Good team. Real good team and uh, been around for a long time. It's glad to see them guys get a win. We moved right along into NASCAR action, and they were at Talladega. Small track. What? Real small track. I can't hear you. It's a real, real, real small track. Oh, of course. Oh, you're being funny, huh? Yeah. 
You, you got a little bit of the humor this week, don't you? No, I'm, I'm fine. I'm uh, in a good mood. And You uh, want to go? This was a good race, actually. <laughs> This was a great race. It was a spectacular race, folks. Like how I slid off the subject there? Yes, very good. You diffused the situation very well. Congratulations. Cool. Those classes have been paying off, folks. I imagine they do. The, the lower blood pressure seems to be helping. <laughs> um, but, no, this was, Neil, this was really cool because, you know, we've talked about this, you know, water cooler chatting about the new NASCAR playoff format, the chase format, uh, the chase grid, I think is what it's called. I'm not sure. Um, little, still a little confused. But you had numerous drivers entering this race where they had to win to advance on to the next round and bad brad keselowski just did that yeah he uh that last two laps on that restart i mean that was amazing to watch what he did to be able to uh be there for the win i mean newman with the momentum coming around him and him sucking up to his quarter panel and being able to uh stop the momentum that ryan had and and kenseth being there at the right moment to push him across i mean it, Brad did everything that last lap that he possibly could do to be there and uh, deserves to be there. I mean, he put it all on the line and made it happen. Did you find it a little ironic that Matt Kenseth and Brad Keselowski were working together at Talladega? Yeah, there was Considering. A, little, a little bit of uh, a little irony. Bit of irony jokes going aside from the previous week where they were actually doing fisticuffs. But, uh, what did we learn in that whole altercation at Charlotte? Well, the whole idea is uh, definitely get out of the car and uh, – be able to i guess uh i guess talk man to man or fist to fist that's better than uh, using a car as a weapon there now just remember this earlier this year marcos ambrose clocked casey mears got fined for it yes matt kenseth put brad keselowski in a headlock no fine so if you're going to go after an altercation tackle and headlock the guy don't throw a punch yeah i don't think that was probably on matt's mind i think he was just trying to get to brad any way he could so I think he was trying out for the Green Bay Packers. He is a huge Packer fan. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, you know. But in the end, folks, Joey Logano, Brad Keselowski, Denny Hamlin, Ryan Newman, Jeff Gordon, Carl Edwards, Matt Kenseth, and Kevin Harvick are the eight that remain. Some notables that are missing, really from the Hendrick camp, Dale Earnhardt Jr., Jimmy Johnson, the quest for seven, which I, I don't – I know he had the drive for six and then one for the thumb when he went for the fifth one. I don't know what we're calling uh, the, the march for seventh. But that's going to be delayed a year. Yeah. Dale Earnhardt Jr., he's out. Yep. Casey Kane, old blue eyes, he gone. Yep. So, Mr. Hendrick, only one bullet left in the gun. Well, I think there's a, a wide, a wide, I guess, pull of diversity for, between the teams at, in the chase. Um, it, it would be interesting. Really? Yeah, I mean, you got the two Penske guys. Maybe. Who've been lights out this year. They have been, and they deserve to be there. And, uh and then you throw in the uh, the Lone Ranger with the Hendrick car that's in there. Um, Ooh, that's a good name for Good job, Neil. Yeah, I mean, I think that's uh, – it, it It has been a roadmap to, to keep up with, and it's still not over yet. I mean, uh, we still got three races, and then we determine the four that go for the championship. But uh, it is a roadmap to keep up with what's going on, and uh, I guess it is provided, especially for this last week, in some good racing and uh, a little bit of drama to go with it to see who got in there. And we'll talk about it coming up here in just a little bit, but they go to Martinsville this weekend where there could be some retaliation. But we'll get to that in a little bit. And before we get on out of here with our race recaps and results, we had two R&R Enterprises employees this weekend, Neil. One fast, one slow. Really? Compete in the rock and roll half marathon here in St. Louis. Brett Rideout, rock star extraordinaire. Yep. Finished in about an hour and 25 minutes. Yep. That was pretty impressive. Even wore the R&R colors. They caught him on the news. Yeah, I seen that. That was pretty cool. And they caught his mom, the accountant, oh, also boy. in the shot, too. It's a perfect family moment here. <laughs> that was pretty cool. Yeah, it was a really cool deal. I did the same race, did not finish nearly as fast as Brett, met my goal. That's all we need to talk about. You guys did a good job. Well, we tried anyway. You survived. I'm telling you, you know, but, uh, you know, the coolest thing I thought about that thing, it was my first half marathon. Mm-hmm. I got to tell you, some of the motivational signs that I saw out there were just <laughs> spectacular. Okay? I'm going to list a few of them off. There was the perfect, uh, you know, go team go and run faster, don't quit. Here were my three favorites, though. There was one lady that had a checklist. On hers, it says, this is what I have. And she said, coffee, bagels, and a nice seat. On the other side, it said, this is what you have aches, pains, 
and a lot of sweat. <laughs> okay, that was number one. Number two, towards the end, there was a guy standing there looking rather sheepishly. Yep. I uh, could kind of tell he was not uh, the uh, maybe what you would call a social outcast or a loner. Sure. He had a sign that said chess is better than running. Really? Yeah, I didn't quite understand that one. Don't get that. And then there were the sorority girls that had a litany of signs that I cannot mention here on the air, but uh, very creative. Well, it's probably well worth uh, seeing the signs in. I almost got distracted. <laughs> That's cool. <laughs> About ran off the course. <laughs> Detour. Detour. Shoot, yeah. they were at mile eight. I got a ways back to go. Anyways, but congratulations to all of the Team R&R drivers and competitors this weekend on a phenomenal weekend. And coming up here, Neil, uh, we have an interview, and I forgot to tease this a little bit earlier at the top of the show, but we talked about Donnie Schatz and how dominant he's been this year on his way to potentially a sixth World of Outlaws STP Sprint Car Series title. I think he's got it sewn up in the bag, but, you know, knock on wood, yeah, he still has to lock it up down in Charlotte. Dale Blaney has been another driver that has just had a lights-out season. Yeah, I've been pretty impressed with what he's done with the All-Stars this year. And with a new team and whatnot, I got the chance to sit down and talk to him. Folks, you need to take a listen to this. A great interview with Dale Blaney. Here we go. And at this time, we'd like to welcome in the driver of the number 14K Kennedy Cattle TI-22 Penske Racing Shocks, GF1, the lowrider himself, Dale Blaney. Welcome to Gas and Glory. Dale, how are you doing today? I'm good, really good. I'm glad to hear that, and you're obviously doing very well this year. <clears throat> Congratulations on a spectacular season. 20 wins and counting, including one with the World of Outlaws STP Sprint Car Series and 16 with the UNOH All-Star Circuit of Champions. You capped off your unprecedented fifth All-Star title this year. First, man, just what a year, dude. Yeah, it's been good. We didn't uh, we didn't really know what to expect. We started, you know, George and I stayed together uh you know, Tony Kennedy owns a team now. We kind of switched switched a little bit of stuff, but uh, a lot of stuff stayed the same. So we really didn't uh, didn't have a great idea of how we were going to do. We felt like we were going to do as, as well as we have in the past. We had the same cars and same motors, and, you know, George still working on it and the same crew. So uh, we didn't really have a whole lot of expectations, but uh, we were going to have some fun and go racing, and uh, I, I guess it's led to some good things. It absolutely has, and that was kind of leading into my next question is, you had been driving the number two car with TI-22, and then this year making the move to the 14K machine. Um, obviously, the transition worked pretty well with you guys. How important was it that you and George Fisher stayed together to kind of ease that transition process? Uh, it was pretty key. I mean, George and I worked together for uh, 12, 13 years now. We started in 02, I guess, working together. So we've been at it a long time. Uh, you know, I mean, we don't even have to, you know, talk a bunch at the racetrack. He knows what I like, and, you know, I know what to expect with the race car. So we just, we, we kind of work really good together. You know, he's one of my best friends in life, and, you know, we just, you know, we just enjoy being around each other. <laughs> at least I enjoy being around him. You'd have to ask <laughs> him that same question about me, but uh, it was really good. I mean, Tony Kennedy's a great guy. Uh, he's been wanting to race a little bit. He's raced off and on. For a couple of years, you know, Cole Duncan ran his car a couple of years ago a little bit and um, he used to race himself. So he knows the racing gig and, you know, he just, I mean, he's a diehard race fan and, I mean, he just wants to go racing every week and see where we're at. And we've just been having a good time. And uh, George is, it, it's definitely taken a lot off uh, of George mentally, you know, just by working on the car instead of, you know, having to drive the truck and trailer to the track and uh, get his credit card out and put gas in the truck and pit passes. It's it's really freed him up a lot to just work on the car and concentrate, and it's pretty much showed this year how we've done. Well, you guys have been fast pretty much anywhere that you've gone this year, and that's a, that's a testament to the two of you guys. Very tough duo to beat. Talking with Dale Blaney here on Gas and Glory, and, 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 and Dale, as we've talked about, the phenomenal season that you've had this year. As you reflect back, now the season's not over, but we're kind of getting into those those waning weekends, if you will. As you look back, what is an accomplishment or what is the accomplishment that sticks out to you the most that you and George and the entire team were able to take care of this year? Uh, I don't, uh, it's hard to pinpoint. You always, 
you know, at the, first, at the beginning of the year, I always feel like if I win an outlaw race during the year, I've accomplished something, and we did that. Uh, you know, we won. We wanted to win the All Star Point Championship. Uh, you know, at the beginning of the year, there was Tim Schaefer and Kevin All and uh, Hodden Shield and Holt Graver. You know, Caleb Helms and Andrew Parker. So there was a really good group of guys uh, with the All Stars, and we wanted to win that, and we and we definitely won that. So. You know, we've accomplished about everything we wanted to, and just just the idea of being fast every night was uh, was a good goal in my mind, and, and we've kind of accomplished that too. So, you know, we've got we got three really good races coming up that uh, we want to win at least. You know, we want to get a win in one of them, and Charlotte, we got two down there, and uh, we got Atomic this weekend. You know, it's fifteen pounds to win over there, and uh, really looking forward to going there, and it's. 35 minutes from Tony's shop, so, you know, it's Georgia's favorite track, you know, one of my favorite tracks, so yeah, it's, it's, it's really one that we've been pointing to, you know, all year long when they came out with this race, and one we really wanted to uh, to win, and that's coming up this weekend, so hopefully we can go over there and make a good showing. That'll be a deadly combination for sure, anyways. And, you know, when you talked about picking up the All-Star Circuit of Champions Championship this year, and when you opened the history book for that series, Anyone that does that will see your name at the top of several categories now, most championships, most wins. How does it feel to have achieved so much in a history that is that is just absolutely ripe with history and the drivers that have competed in it? And it's just so – there's so much history there. How do, you, how do you assess where you're at, or has it even really hit you where you're at in the history books with the series? Well, uh, that's for pretty much other people to decide. You know, myself, I just look at, you know, trying to go and compete in every race and, and try to be competitive. And if we, you know, win some races, that's great. And, and we've done, you know, I've raced for some great owners. Uh, you know, from, you know, Dean Lindsay, I won his car. And uh, Tim Hughes, we won a lot of races in his car and had lots of, a lot of success. And then uh, Fritz Andrews. And then George owned the car for, you know, four or five years, and now Tony Kennedy. So we've, and TI-22 owned it for a few years. So we've, I've, I've raced for some, some great car owners and uh, some good mechanics, and uh, it's just been a great combination. So, you know, not all of it's me. I mean, if you put me in a not a great situation, I'm going to, you know, drive it like that. But I, I've, been, I've been lucky enough to sit in good stuff, and here I am. So I, mean, I, I really don't think much about it right now. Uh, i got a lot more to accomplish, I hope, in the next four or five years, and whatever happens after that. You guys can talk all you want about it and uh, have fun with it, but for me, I'm just looking forward to winning the next race I go to. There you go, the mentality of a racer, folks. We kind of know what the rest of your plans of 2014 are, so that is pretty awesome anyways, and then we got a nice off season. But uh, good to hear. Well, great season for you, bud. But before you get on out of here, each and every time we do an interview here on Gas and Glory, we have a segment called Squealing the Tires. It's rapid fire. You get some very uh, predominant choices here, and you get to pick which one you want and maybe tell us a little bit why. Are you ready to go? This is going to be fast. Yeah, as long as i got a pick, uh, I'm okay. But if I had to think about something and actually pick it myself, I'd probably struggle. <laughs> all right. Well, we're going to make it easy. we got the options for you. All right? Perfect. Okie dokie. Question number one. Hamburger or pizza? Pizza. Knoxville or Eldora? Eldora. LeBron or Kobe? LeBron. Carrie Underwood or Rihanna? Uh, both. <laughs> and last but not Here. least. Go ahead. No. You, you don't want to be great. <laughs> and last but not least. Will the Kansas City Chiefs win the Super Bowl this year? Negative. Oh, man. Anyways, that's squealing the tires with Dale Blaney. By the way, I threw that last one in there because he and I both happen to be Kansas City Chiefs fans. So had to throw you bone. They will. They will make a statement though. They're they're playing well, and uh, I think they're in good shape. But uh, they got a tough division, and uh, well, we'll see. But they're playing pretty well. We'll have to see what happens anyways, folks. And that was Squealing the Tires, and we want to thank you, Dale, for joining us here on Gas and Glory. Best of luck in the rest of the season and into next year, and we will be sure to chat with you soon. Thanks again. How about thank you.
And we'd like to thank Dale for joining us once again. And, and Neil, he's always a great interview because a man that's very knowledgeable about the sport, very humble, and he's a bit of a smart aleck. Let's just say he's a bit of a smart aleck. <laughs> Absolutely, yes. You know, uh, earlier this summer at um, earlier this summer at Knoxville, he tried to give me a very special birthday gift, and it, it did not go over well. I, I rejected it immediately, and uh, that's. So I'm gonna what was that? I'm going to just say that it involved him having to do the like the Chinese fire drill dance between his street clothes and his fire suit. And he was just being a bit, just a bit too suggestive. Oh, really? Having too much fun with me on my birthday. Oh, okay. Yeah. There's photos of this? I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> for your sake. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, but anyways, we want to thank Dale Blaney for joining us once again here on Gas and Glory. And remember, you can follow along with us here on Gas and Glory on Facebook and Twitter. We're also on YouTube, and uh, we're in the iTunes store. Please subscribe to us. We have the RSS feed up now, so you can download us. Uh, take us, take Neil and I with you in the car. That's right. And guys, I got to tell you, what's up? If you ever need some help with the ladies, we're more than happy to help. Just crank up Kyle and Neil on your radio. It's like uh, it's like a babe magnet. That's awesome. <laughs> I never really thought of it that way, but uh, absolutely, I'm babe magnet material. <laughs> <laughs> okay, speaking of babe magnet material, one of the questions I asked in squealing the tires to Dale. Yeah. Was would he choose Carrie Underwood or Rihanna? I want your thoughts. You know, I'm kind of I'm going his way. I'd take either one right now. You t- <laughs> <laughs> That's not a choice. It's either A or B. It's not A, B, or C. I, if I had to choose one, I'd probably go with Carrie Underwood. That, very good. Good yep. choice. Good choice. So, And now with that, now that we know Neil's preference, we move right along into the preview for this weekend. The World of Outlaws STP Sprint Car Series returns to Port Royal Speedway for the first time since 2004 when, you guessed it, Donnie Schatz won. Ding, 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 ding. Yep. Look for the locals to be very strong up there. And uh, I would say uh, Don Kreitz Jr., Greg Hodnett, Lance DeWeese, Stevie Smith. There's four drivers right there that I would really keep an eye on. Yeah, uh, you got, again, going back to PA, it throws out... uh a lot of possibilities for the locals uh, to take and steal win from the World Outlaw guys. They want to steal the Outlaws money, that is for sure. It's a big track, Port Royal too. Oh my gosh, you know, we talk about half miles like Eldora, Knoxville, and Williams Grove. I remember going to Port Royal and standing in turn three and just seeing how much speed the cars carry into the corners. They look like they're going 20 miles an hour faster than the other three tracks I mentioned. Yeah, it's uh, just a it's big... Freaky fast. Yeah, it's a big old friggin' half mile, and it's bigger. I mean, it's Williams Grove's more like a paperclip. This one's more spread out, got wider turns, and of course, they can carry more speed into it. But uh, neat place. Very neat place in this race. Uh, you know, on the fairgrounds, it's not going on during the county fair, unfortunately. Otherwise, yeah. you'd be able to enjoy some excellent fair food. Which, by the way, I was calling a football game Friday night. Yeah. And I don't know how they were doing this, but it was almost like they were piping in the smell of funnel cake to the booth. Really? Yeah, I, I'm gonna have to check on that. But if it was like an air freshener, yeah, I'll get one for your truck. <laughs> Great, <laughs> that's what I need. Uh, moving right along, short track nationals are up next for the ASCS series down at I-30 Speedway in Arkansas. Don't they call that the ditch? No, no, no. That's the Memphis deal. That's uh, ah, Memphis that's what I was deal. thinking. That's yeah, what this thinking. ain't the ditch. This is I-30. The it's speed bump? Yeah. No, okay. it's not the speed bump either. It's not the speed bump? But this is a great re- weekend for them with uh, short tracks coming. I mean, this is a, an event that everybody looks forward to uh, every year. And definitely, uh, it's usually kind of, we've had some uh, guys that were breakthrough standouts, like mm-hmm. uh, Christopher Bell made a name for himself a couple years ago there. So very interesting to see that. And I know we've got a couple guys down there we're pulling for. I know Kevin Swindell in the uh, Cooper Racing 01 car this weekend. Yeah, we're going to uh, we're going to have those shirts available online, folks. You can pick them up down at the track, or you can get them online at r-racewear.com. I'll let you know uh, when we have those up. But yeah, short track nationals, uh, a very prestigious event. Been lucky enough to follow it for the, probably the last three to four years. Another great 360 event here in the racing community. And NASCAR is at Martinsville. Could be uh, time for some retaliation. Getting on the old chrome bumper horn there, Nilo Quicko. Yeah, a little bit of bumper cars usually is the way to go at Martinsville. And uh, 
Kind of similar to the way we do some eye racing there, Kyle. And you know, I wasn't going to get into that, of but course now not. that you did, what? we we don't play bumper cars. No, we don't. We play demolition derby. No, usually one of us is uh, sitting there wrecked on the infield. Do you remember the time that we all raced Talladega? And Which time? Well, now hold on. Because be... usually it's it's a smoking pile of heat for somebody, and usually it's two or three of us down at the bottom there. Well, I, I still remember the time you got flipped across the trioval. Yeah, that happened. Uh, and then I remember the time that uh, I was trying to, I'm not sure what I was trying to do, but down the back stretch, I went from the bottom to the top and didn't realize that there was a car up there. <laughs> Yeah, I think I was uh, I was I had the best seat in the house for that one. I'm <laughs> I'm watching it and you just did a right turn and poor old Ryan on the outside. I think you got a door ding on that one. Door ding, shifted the front end over, <laughs> radiator dislodged. Yeah, he wasn't too pleased with that move. <laughs> oh, it's uh, always something there, Kyle. It is always something. That's why I stick to two leg races instead of races with four wheels. Oh wow. But uh, also, before we get done with previews for this weekend, there will be a very big store announcement coming this weekend, folks. Uh, Stay tuned on Friday morning. That's when we're going to announce it. You're not going to want to miss this. We're kicking off the Christmas shopping season early this year. We've got a huge announcement. So make sure that you've got those pocketbooks ready. Those credit cards are ready to melt because... Freshly to ready to tap out there? Oh, yeah. We've got a good announcement for this weekend, but tune into our Facebook and our Twitter pages on Friday morning at RNR95, and we'll let you know what we're going to be doing because it's, uh, what, is, what does Donald Trump say? It's going to be huge. Oh, really? It's going to be huge. Cool. I'll have to check that one out. By the way, yeah, you'll fly it. Nice. <laughs> Third time today. All right, now it is time for a segment here on the show that we have come to love. It is called, Did You See That? Each and every week, Neil Quick and I find something cool, unique, and interesting from the racing industry as a whole. And we ask, did you see that? So I'm going to go first here today. We go back to Trophy Cup this past weekend out in Tulare, California. And Rico Abreu and Jonathan Allard with the awesome move. The ultimate show of sportsmanship pulling Tim Kading out of what looked to be a fiery crash. Neil Quick, did you see that? Yeah, I did. I thought that was pretty impressive. And as fast as Rico got out of there to get Tim out of the car and Jonathan was right oh, there, too. Oh, he was fast. Yeah, it, it was impressive. He was almost too. faster than what he was racing around there. Yeah, it was. Uh, it looked like a pretty nasty spill that TK had and uh, flame shooting out of the car. And Rico got out of there and, uh, <laughs> man, for a little guy, he got out of there and made it happen really quick. It was amazing to watch, and that is my did you see that for this week. Yeah, it was uh, good to see. Great sportsmanship between all the drivers, and uh, glad to see that uh, everybody came out okay there. So, my did you see that, Kyle. Okay. I'm ready. Okay, I got to watch between the NASCAR race and uh, a few football games and uh, some other racing. The monster what kind inter- of cable package you got? Uh, I, I'm not sure I have to look into that. I just know I got a lot like of channels. Ultimate? Platinum? I have no idea. You know, that's right. You do have kids. So it's probably like a combination of Ultimate and Platinum. Yeah, I, I'm sure we got plenty of stations. I flip through until I find something. But uh, Saturday night, Monster Energy Cup from Las Vegas. Kind yeah. Of a, kind of a prelude for the uh, 2015 Supercross season. Uh, great to see them guys back in action. And uh, impressive. Uh, Trey Kennard uh, goes out there. And, and on the Monster Energy Cup deal, the format uh, for the races is – pretty drastically different than a normal 20 lap main for the uh, supercross riders you get your heats and then your main during the, the regular season this was a uh, deal where you have three main events three 10 lap races and if a guy can link all three events together and win all three gets a cool million dollars pocket change for you hey Kyle yeah mm-hmm. yeah? yeah okay well Trey Kennard goes out and wins the first two races and running a third, fourth lap of the uh, third race all over the top of Millsaps. Uh, Davey Millsaps riding for Team Kawasaki this year. Trey still riding for the uh, Team Honda Muscle Bowl team. Uh, pretty impressive. Getting ready to put a pass on him coming out of the new section coming into the stadium. Yeah. Clips a tough block. It goes down. Oh! That's a hard way to lose a million. Did you see that? Yeah, we're taking a look at it right now. Oh. oh. Pretty ugly, eh? You used to take spells like that back in your earlier days, didn't you? Yeah, but I was never in a hunt for a million dollars, buddy. 
You would run that hard for five grand, wouldn't you? I'd run that hard for five hundred bucks. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Uh, oh man well folks that is did you see that uh a segment we really come to love now that we've got rid of squeal or no squeal i know you're happier about that yeah it's uh i think that's <laughs> kind of neat to see and uh we may bring squeal or no squeal back squeal or no squeal well we yeah. got squealing the tires so there's still some squealing going on around here oh nice on a, on a daily basis well, that's cool speaking of squealing before we get on out of here now neil it was heartbreaking mm-hmm. that we the people of st louis are not getting to partake in a, uh, a fall classic this year, a World Series. Oh, so you're making reference to the Cardinals losing to the Giants well, last now, week. Well, I, I am sharing in the pain here. Okay. I am sharing in the pain because as a, as a resident of St. Louis, and as somebody that has traversed 13.1 miles of this city yep. on foot, yep. I am a fan. But I have to ask you, since you uh, you were a baseball player, you're a baseball fan, you moonlighted as a baseball coach. Yep. I need your professional, expert, somewhat weird take, okay, analysis, if you will, on the San Francisco Giants versus the Kansas City Royals. Well, I'm, I know the series starts tonight, and I'm really excited about it, and I'm very excited for the idea that Kansas City made it in for the first time in a long time, 29 years, I guess is what I'm hearing. Yeah. And being a Cardinals fan this Before year. Before I was born. Yeah, definitely. Uh, but going back to that, Kyle being still in his infancy here. Very much so. But uh, going back and, and – being a Cardinals fan, we're kind of spoiled here in St. Louis because we do make it to the postseason almost every year and very excited to see Kansas City get the opportunity. And I'd love for them to, to knock off the Giants in this deal just because of the idea that they haven't been there for a long time and they're only four hours away. It's our cross-state team and our American League team for Missouri. We don't get the the chance to all the time see them there and I'd like to see them win, but I think it's going to be a close series. I look for this thing to go six or seven games. I'm going to disagree with you. You are? Yep. Go figure. San Francisco is going to win it all, baby. They are going to win it all. It's an even year. Okay. What happened in 2010? Yeah, I, I know they won. What happened in 2012? They won. And what year is it now? 2014. Boom. Mr. Shannon agrees with me. I'm going against you on this one. You're going against me and Mr. Shannon. I'm hope. Well, I'm not going against you. I think it's going to be a close series, and San Francisco got a great team, and it could go either way, and uh, they've just got to stop Kansas City's momentum. But uh, – don't don't write KC off on this deal. You want to put a taco on this? Yeah, we can put a taco on this. You got KC, I got San Fran? I'll take KC. Okay, taco it is. It's on. All right, on like Donkey Kong, folks. But it is time for us to get on out of here. We want to thank you guys for tuning in to Gas and Glory. And remember, you can pick up your favorite driver's gear over at www.r-racewear.com, the web's largest store for dirt track racing apparel and merchandise. On behalf of everyone here at r r Enterprises, including Charles the Chauffeur, he's Neil Quick and I'm Kyle Luters, and we will see you next week. You've been listening to Gas and Glory, presented by R&R Enterprises. All rights reserved. Please visit the web's largest sprint car store today at www.r-rracewear.com. The views and opinions expressed in the show are the host and guest alone and do not directly reflect those of R&R Enterprises.